Our next presentation is from Sumya Ranjan and Shravan Kumar, talking to the point of AI for the marine environment, biodiversity and conservation and social good. Hello, welcome to the session on AI for the marine environment, biodiversity, conservation and social good. My name is Shravan. I'm the director of client success at Gramina. We are a data and AI company with presence in five locations across the world. Through our solutions, we intend to bring data as insightful stories. And as part of that, we have a huge body of work in the ESG sector, and particularly in the underwater and marine conservation areas. Our teams have been constantly building uh, cutting edge products that can help conservationists, managers of uh, fisheries, aquaculture professionals, and GIS officers in various organizations. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick glimpse of uh, the solution um, and, uh, uh, and our goal uh, is to make tools and methodologies like this and uh, technology like AI available to people and organizations that are working to solve uh, these problems that help create a better sustainable blue planet. And in that pursuit, we have worked with the likes of World Bank, Microsoft Philanthropy and AI for Earth, and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, to name a few. So why is creating a sustainable and blue planet important? As it turns out, fishes top the list of animals that have the highest number of species that are endangered as per the IUCN red list. The 3,000 odd that are on top of this list form a part of 35,000 fish species that have ever been registered in the history of the planet, which makes almost one out of uh, 10 uh, fish species vulnerable to extinction today. If that was not enough, one third of global fish stocks today are overexploited, which means they have, uh, they are they're produced using unsustainable methods, uh, which means uh, the, the margins could be lower and uh, adding to that problem is illegal fishing that is rampant across the world. Now, how can AI and technology solve uh, these problems? Uh, at Gramner, we believe that uh, you know custom data solutions uh, for underwater AI uh, can help answer some of these questions. Uh, I'll start with our AI as a service for underwater species detection, which helps, uh, which has helped uh, in the past. In fact, uh, conservation groups, uh, uh, foundations. Uh, zoo systems, um, you know, identify and classify species and uh, maintain a record of their sightings so that they, uh, you know, are alarmed about anything that is an aberration in their counts and sightings. Um, and using computer vision, we have been able to achieve that and institutionalize that in multiple organizations. Uh, using computer vision again, we've been able to estimate biomass in, in commercial fisheries where there are huge tanks of uh, you know, fishes and uh, there is a cycle of growth that the fishes undergo. So you have to also uh, you know, monitor the environmental parameters like uh, dissolved oxygen, pH levels of the water, and so on and so forth. So the biomass estimation through computer vision plus the uh, you know, environmental pa parameter monitoring uh, helps them, helps the commercial fisheries have better visibility of their produce and also do so sustainably. Last but not the least, uh, we also have a slew of GIS solutions for marine management, which can help track uh, water quality in the ocean, uh, track ships and vessels that are not supposed to be there and are taking part of uh, in, in illegal fishing. So this can help ecological researchers and um, even commercial fisheries from uh, you know, falling prey to illegal fishing. So I think these three solutions can answer some of the problems we spoke about, but I'll quickly, you know, jump into a you know, quick glimpse of what our solution look like. So uh, here in this uh, slide, uh, I have a couple of videos, which when played, show you that a certain fish is passing through a tunnel uh, in which a camera trap is fixed. Uh, whenever the fish uh, pass through, uh, the camera starts taking the video. And if you see here, uh, as soon as a fish passes through, the AI model is able to detect that it is a certain species, right? And even a part of the fish's you know, head is enough for the AI to detect uh, that it is a certain species, right? 
showing you another example of uh, a smaller fish but a, but a similar tunnel uh, here uh, not only the head even the tail is enough for the ai to pick up that uh, you know this is the classification uh, that has to be done for that particular fish uh, right and this has immensely helped the river conservation agency that you work with in the past um, and uh, you know uh, their problem was to actually you know do this detection through you know binge watching all these videos and having their you know biologists watch these videos and tag the fishes with their species now it it requires two things a lot of time and secondly the biologist knowledge or domain expertise which helps them identify a species as it is so we train the ai to acquire that knowledge and uh, you know tag species automatically which helps in reclaiming all the resource time uh, otherwise spent in just watching videos. Now, uh, you know, for the person who does not understand this technology, we have packaged it all in a, you know, a web app or an app of sorts, which can help bring out these insights of the number of sightings, the trends. If something is going too much up and down, uh, they can be quickly notified of any aberration in the, in the environment. Uh, which enables them to you know monitor this very closely and hence you know draw attention to something that might go wrong right this can help a lot of conservation agencies there's one kind of solution and then when you bubble this up with multiple uh, cameras and multiple you know locations uh, you can also do biomass estimation of a fish or, or, or a school of fishes right uh, so the same thing was applied uh, when we worked with a commercial fishery in Indonesia uh, who wanted to track in each of their, you know, fish tanks, which are huge, uh, you know, 18 meter to 50 meter kind of uh, size where they had these fishes and they used to grow the fishes over a period of time. And, uh, you know, uh, before the solution, they didn't have any visibility of their yield, of their produce, what they're going to get. Um, and, and they had no control whatsoever. We helped them achieve this by, you know, just installing a couple of cameras overhead and underwater and a bunch of sensors that, uh, you know, measured the dissolved oxygen, pH levels of the water and other things that help inform the conditions in the water and hence correlating that with the growth of the fish. <clears throat> now, when you're able to do both, you can correlate this with an AI model with a precision feeding analyzer what that means is you're able to say that based on the uh, you know size of the fish or the stage of the fish growth we're able to feed the uh, you know uh, fishes accordingly to avoid underfeeding or overfeeding uh, and this enables you to have better yield better control on your environmental parameters at any given time if there is a parameter that is going out of uh, you know the ballpark uh, they can quickly be uh, you know, notified and necessary action or intervention can be taken by on-ground personnel. Now, summing up all of this, the outcomes of this uh, you know, solution was uh, one resource time gain, like I said, highly skilled people watching videos is no good for anyone. So we reclaimed that uh, resource time by almost 98%. We reduced the uh, manual effort as you, you know, saw uh, the IoT cameras or the you know connected cameras to do all the data collection and tagging, and the AI used to do the tagging. So no manual effort. All the manual effort was you know, brought down to zero. And then in the case of biomass estimation and the commercial fishery use case, uh, there was a huge saving over a period of three months. We observed twenty percent of cost savings on the feeding um, alone, right? And then the bottom line uh, also getting impacted was uh, the kind of impact that we were able to create through these solutions. Now, these are some success stories, but our, our solutions come in all forms and shape. A similar technology, but a different flavor was used to uh, count penguins in Antarctica, uh, you know, uh, classify and detect species in, uh, you know, a natural park. Uh, we were also able to use this to uh, avoid uh, elephant human conflict to just give you a few examples. Now, um, 
at last i would like to leave a message for everyone that's you know uh, looking at this is uh, again reiterating our uh, vision of sharing these tools and methodologies uh, to uh, people and organizations that are otherwise not equipped or not invested into technology so we want to uh, you know get to a stage where this ai can run on even mobile phones and uh, we want to build a knowledge repo a database that can act as a base for others to come and build on top of it right so it's a huge shout out to everyone out there to you know collaborate with us and for that you can get in touch with us on 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 the you know links that you see gramner.com/ailabs or you can tweet uh, to us at gramner or uh, on my personal id at uh, shravan like you see on the screen uh, thank you uh, everyone for the opportunity and uh, uh, we hope we'll cross paths very soon thank you so much thank you for sharing shravan um, as someone who's spent a, a year or so feeding fish in salmon pens in northern Scotland and has to stay up overnight with infrared glasses on to count penguins coming up beaches from to their nest boxes, it sounds like you've got some great breakthroughs there. So thank you very much. Uh, Chevron spoke to fish species as having high extinction rate. Now, I would just like to urge everyone to clear up a number of misconceptions about what the IUCN red list characterizations mean and suggest that reading the criteria will help you see why marine fish are likely a group with the lowest extinction rates of animals. But let's get on with a question, and our question is going to Sumia, part of Chevron's team. Um, this is really about talking about partnerships between aquaculture and fisheries. And it's obvious that some of the greatest growths in understanding fish stocks has come from aquaculture, because obviously we get a much closer view on how fish develop and so on. I I'm just wondering, now that you've pointed out that you're developing some of your tools for aquaculture, and these are likely to cross over to fisheries, just give us some idea on how long it's taken you to get to where you are today, where you're already talking about spreading this technology across other animal groups. How, how long has your team been active? Thank you. Uh, thanks, Kim, and thanks everyone for having us here. Uh, so we started our AI journey, I think, four years back with Microsoft, uh, with their AI for the Earth initiative. Um, uh, so initially, we started out uh, detecting species uh, on land, like different animal species, and then we moved into drone imagery where we used to track elephants in forest and make sure there are as less human conflicts as possible and slowly moved into fishery. So um, uh, the models that we have built in-house in, in Gramna, uh, they are agnostic to any particular animal or fish in place, right? Like uh, they would work out of the box uh, if you have labeled data uh, available. So what we do as a technology company is uh, we have our algorithms in place uh, which are based on state-of-the-art uh, models that are currently out there, uh, which do the work perfectly. Uh, when we onboard a profit or a non-profit to us, right, what we need from them is data. Uh, most of the time, they do have data. It's not in a labeled format. We either help them in the labeling process or we, um, like, like we generally employ a third party who comes in and labels the data, which requires some expertise in that particular domain. So uh, to, to answer in short, it's been three and four three to four years we have been working in this space and now we have a better visibility of how we are heading and how the industry is headed. Like even when I was going through the agenda of the talks that you have lined up today, right? Uh, like there's a lot of overlap in the work that we are doing. Even uh, the previous speaker, when he was sp speaking about fish ID and the work that we have done, I see a lot of overlap there. And uh, that's something that, that's happening across the world, just that we are not connected. Uh, so if we could build a database of uh, labeled fish and uh, a database of good models that are out there, which are working out of the box, I think that that would help everyone. Thank you very much, Matt. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in your work. It's a fantastic presentation. Thanks to the whole team for putting it together. And, um, I'm quite interested in uh, just the, the, the cost of investment to do what you've done uh, in, in that work and, and how, you came to, how you came to do it. And also your future trajectory in terms of reaching out to people that might not have that sort of investment to to uh, to implement such technologies, you know, 
making it more low cost, more more accessible for small scale aquaculturists, for example. Uh, sure. Uh, like I said, like uh, we have we have a very small team in place in Gramna. Uh, it's called the Gramna AI Labs, and I head the team. Uh, so it's a small team. Like we have a, like around. 10 odd people working mostly in uh, computer vision space. Uh, so over the past years, we have dev developed enough expertise and we have spent countless hours building the models, training them out, using all the GPUs and all, uh, which is in fact in impacting them on, right? So we don't want people to repeat that process. That's why it's not just a for-profit organization we work with. We work with a lot of nonprofits, right? So uh, we, we don't expect them um, to like, start the journey or repeat the process that we have done so far. We want people to build on top of us, right? Like when we say that we have computer vision models, generally we have a pipeline in place and it's an active learning pipeline. Uh, we won't give you one single model, right? We'll, we'll give you a pipeline, which would do, let's say 70% or 75% of the work that you're currently doing. And it might be anything. It might be fish hiding, it might be tracking, it might be classification, it might be biomass estimation, right? Uh, our pipeline is designed to like to be flexible enough to adapt to these kind of tasks and it would start with a decent amount of accuracy and then uh, you have a active learning pipeline in place which will then help you out to relabel your data or correct the mistakes that the ai model is currently doing and with time it evolves along with you so uh, it's like general software engineering you don't have to build from scratch you you sit on solid subjects and then you build on top of it so that's what we are providing we have something called gramix it's an open platform it's on github anyone can access it to start like using the models for their own data and then build on top of it, reach out to us if they need any help there. 